Gonorrhea is a ticking bomb because of antibiotic resistance. So what are antibiotics and what is antibiotic resistance? Antibiotics are drugs that kill uh, uh, bacteria, but if they are not capable of killing bacteria, the bacteria are resistant against antibiotics. So, no, the reason why a gonorrhea is a ticking bomb is resistance. And why is it a ticking bomb? As you all know, sex is here to stay. <laughs> and <laughs> there are more than 100 million cases of gonorrhea each year worldwide. And if you can't treat acute gonorrhea, then you get chronic gonorrhea. And if you have chronic gonorrhea, you much easier acquire HIV infection, hepatitis, HPV infections. That's viral diseases that can give cancer. So indirectly, antibiotic resistance can lead to more cancer. So that's serious. So first, I have to give you three take-home messages. First, all antibiotic use can lead to antibiotic resistance. Second, there is a worldwide pandemic of resistance due to overuse and misuse of antibiotics. And three, the more antibiotic you use, the more resistance there is. There is a strict correlation between antibiotic usage. This is the use of ciprofloxacin in Norway in 14 years. And you can see antibiotic resistance increase in parallel with the antibiotic use. And that goes for every patient, for every hospital, and for every country. The more you use it, the more you lose it. So, why are we afraid of antibiotic resistance? That's because mortality increases. Mortality is doubled with, you, with an infection with resistant bacteria. You get more serious sick and you stay more longer in the hospitals, and modern medicine, like cancer treatment, transplantations, and advanced surgery will become impossible because all those treatments rely on useful antibiotics. So we are approaching a post-antibiotic era. We are bombed back to before we had antibiotics. And the World Health Organization, they have now recognized antibiotic resistance as one of the biggest threats to public health worldwide. I quote Dr. Margaret Chan. She said, a post-antibiotic antibiotic era in effect means an end to modern medicine as we know it, and again, a strep throat or a scratched knee could kill. Well, that's, that's not nice. But why have we destroyed antibiotics, the most valuable drugs ever. We have to take a little look back in history. You see this graph, it illustrates the upper line, the white line. That's the decrease in crude mortality in the United States during the last century. During the last century, the average age of living increased by 30 years in the Western world. 20 years because of better uh, living condition and 10 years because of medical progress. But what this curve shows you is that the decrease in crude mortality, the white line, is completely parallel to the decrease in mortality caused by infectious diseases. So people, they have always feared infections. Before we had antibiotics, people died of common infections. I just show you one example from Boston. This figure is the mortality of a common pneumonia, a lung infection, before we had antibiotics. On the x-axis, you see different age groups, groups from 12 years until 70 plus. And on the y-axis, the black bars denotes the percent, percentage of people dying from a common pneumonia. And if you, for example, were between 40 and 49 years, you had more than 50% chance to die from a pneumonia. But then we fortunately got antibiotics, and that revolutionized the treatment of infections. Suddenly, we could treat 
pneumonia, meningitis, cellulitis, uh, septicemia, all, all the deadly infections we could suddenly treat. So uh, antibiotics, they were regarded as miracle drugs. But the tragedy is that doctors started to use antibiotics to self-limiting viral disease such as influenza, common cold, uh, bronchitis, etc. And that overuse and misuse has led to resistance. The man who discovered penicillin, Alexander Fleming, already he warned against overuse. And uh, in his Nobel lecture in 1947, he, sa he said these words. The irresponsible person who plays with penicillin will be, will be morally responsible for the man who later succumbs of a penicillin-resistant uh, organism. And he added, I hope this evil will be averted. But it is not averted. We are playing with penicillin more and more. What Alexander Fleming could not foresee was that we also started playing with antibiotics in animals. So to say, a greedy food industry, they added antibiotics as so-called growth promoters to the feed to the animals, just that the chickens, the cattle, the pigs should wait one or two or three percent more so they could earn more money. And is that dangerous? Yes, that is because antibiotic res uh, use in Animals also lead to resistance, and resistance from animals can spread to humans and vice versa. Actually, antibiotic use in animals as prophylaxis is one of the major driving causes for antibiotic resistance, resistance worldwide. It's, it's crazy. Uh, fortunately, it's forbidden in, in the European Union now, but it's still legal in the United States and in the BRIC countries, Brazil, India and China. So, 70% of antibiotics, the antibiotic use in the United States are for animals. So, dear President, of President Hillary Trump, <laughs> dear <laughs> President of the big country, I'm talking to you now. I'm serious. If you want to do mankind a favor, please prohibit antibiotic use as growth promoters in animals right now. If not, I will come after you, and I know where you live. <laughs> so. Sorry. Thank you. So. Why do bacteria become resistant? And first, I have to tell you, in this, all of us, we carry around two kilo bacteria in our body. And normally, we live in, in harmonic symbiosis with our bacteria. We have Staphylococci on the skin, and Staphylococci in our throat, and billions of intestinal bacteria. And we all, we have a thousand and two hundred kilos bacteria here. <laughs> yes. And the bacteria, we need them. They digest your food, they make vitamins, and so on. They protect us from other dangerous bacteria. But what happened? when you get penicillin. You see, you get sick, and the penicillin, that is the hammer, and the, uh, the disease-causing bacteria are the gray bacteria. Penicillin knock out the disease-causing bacteria, but bacteria, they always change their DNA. They always mutate. So while you are receiving penicillin, two of the bacteria, they have mutated, the red ones. And, and the point is that bacteria, they have a generation time of 20 minutes. We have a generation time of 30 years. So in 20 minutes, they have doubled their population. And in a week or in a month, you will be populated by a resistant population of bacteria. The red bacteria have taken all the places. Then if you get sick, you need stronger antibiotics and you kill the initially resistant bacteria. But then there is a new mutation, mutation and at last, you are populated by multi-resistant bacteria, for example, resistant uh, staphylococci. So, why in Earth do bacteria uh, become resistant? That is because they are living at the same Darwinian principle as us. When they are threatened by danger, 
they protect themselves. And because they have this short generation time, they can mutate and mutate and protect themselves. They are, they are like a warship. They have different ways of protecting themselves. That They change their DNA. And then they can make enzymes that destroy the antibiotics. They can pump out the antibiotics or they can block the binding of antibiotics. And worst of all, the resistant genes in their DNA can be transformed to other bacteria, other bacterial species, and from men to animal and vice versa. So that's how they make it. So wh what's the consequences? I make you one. I show one picture, and that's. My friend, Dr. Blomberg in Bergen, he studied septicemia in Tanzanian children. Septicemia is a very serious infection. And the children that were infected with a susceptible bacteria, they survived, more than 80% of them survived. But the children that were infected by resistant bacteria, they died, 80% of the children died. That's tragic, that's deep tragic. So, but also in the Western world, Resistant takes its toll. At present, more people are dying from resistant bacteria than for traffic accidents in, in the EU, EU. So it's, it's really, it's, uh, it's uh, serious. So right now, antibiotic resistance is increasing. I will show you three drug-bug combinations illustrating this. First, we have MRSA, that's methicillin resistant staphylococci. The last 25 years, resistance has been steadily increasing. Then it's vancomycin resistant enterococci increasing, and then it's intestinal bacteria increasing. So they are increasing all the way. No antibiotic can take them. But why not make new antibiotics to counteract the resistance? But that's very difficult, and because it is very difficult technically. It's very expensive. It costs millions of dollars. And the pharmaceutical companies, they are thinking of their profit. It's much more profitable, profitable to make cholesterol medicine than and tranquilizers that people use every day instead of making medicine that people should use as little as possible. So they have stopped making Antibiotics, you can see there is a steadily decrease uh, in, in new antibiotics. The golden era was in the 1960s and the 1970s. Every time there emerged a new resistant bacteria, pharmaceutical companies responded by making new antibiotics. So at the same time as resistance in is increasing, the pharmaceutical companies cannot keep up with the increasing resistance. That's depressing. But is there something we can do? Yes, we can. We can decrease antibiotic use. And it's shown in several studies that if you decrease antibiotic uh, use, resistance will reverse. And in Belgium, they succeeded to decrease antibiotic use in, in respiratory tract infections. And what you can see is that this is the decrease in resistant bacteria, resistant uh, respiratory tract bacteria. So there is some hope. This is, was in Europe, but what will happen elsewhere? If the trend with increasing resistance continue and there are no new antibiotics? That was the question that the English government asked Jim O'Neill and his colleagues. He, he, they said, try to predict what will happen in 2050, that's in 34 years, if this trend continues. And the rough answer is here. In 2050, more people will die of resistant bacteria than of cancer every year. And it will cost trillions of dollars. It will cost around 2 to 3 percent of the world's national budget. So that's not nice to think of. So, to sum up, due to overuse, misuse of antibiotic in men and in animal, 
we are facing an apocalypse of resistant bacteria. Uh, it's the climate crisis of medicine. It's man-made and antibiotics are a limited resource. It's a tragedy of common goods. And deeply seen, it's an ethical problem between generations. So if we don't act in concert globally, scientists, pharmaceutical industry, governments, United Nations, European Union, etc., we'll we will face the apocalypse because it's not me that will come after you, but the resi resistant bacteria will come after you this time. And antibiotic resistance is the best example for fuck nature and nature fucks back. Thank you.